Okay. Welcome everyone to uh, Lake County Art League uh, February meeting and demonstration. And we've got Signita, Signita, but <laughs> I almost missed it there, but again. Uh, and she's going to be doing a demo for us on uh, pastel work. And if you go to her website, uh, you will see that there's a really fantastic artwork that she does. So, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Jeff, and thanks everyone for joining tonight. I'm really excited to demonstrate for you. I have, I'm going to show you right now, an orange that we're going to be working on. I did start it ahead of time because it's not, the composition is not just an orange, and you'll see in just a second, and Jeff, I think you're going to be really excited about what the composition is, but I'm going to be working off of this tonight, and I just wanted to let you guys know before I started some of the materials that I'm using, and um, if you have any questions, just unmute yourself and ask me at any point. I am working on UR 400 grade, it's like a sanded pastel paper. And some of the pastels I'll be using are Terry Ludwig, Great American Artworks, and I'm using a lot of Faber-Castell pastel pencils. And you're gonna see me doing a lot of layering in my work. And the reason I love to layer so much is because the paper that I'm working on, because it has that beautiful, sanded texture, it can accept so many layers of pastel and they appear so vibrant. And one of the reasons I chose an orange today is because of these beautiful colors. And you can see some of my, some of the colors that I've chosen to go ahead and start. So I am going to start, I'm gonna quickly pause the video and get my phone set up so that you can see my easel. So just give me one second to do that and then you'll be able to see my easel. Okay. Maybe I can get just a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, I already completed the butterfly. Um, that's going to be right going over the orange. And I like to wear gloves when I'm working because I blend, you're going to see me blending a lot with my fingers. And I use my fingers kind of like paintbrushes. So I keep everything in a color family. So I'll do all my shadows with one color, all my highlights with another finger, and then the middle values with another finger. And that makes it really easy to blend and make everything uh, very clean so that you don't end up with muddy kind of muted colors. So I'm putting on my gloves right now and I'm going to go ahead and get started with some of the colors. Let me get everything together. So in this composition, the light source is coming from this side. So you're going to see like the highlights over here and the shadows coming down onto this, the right hand side. And I always like to start somewhere in the middle with the middle value. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using this pastel right here. And you can see even when I'm starting this, how vibrant these colors are. It's so pretty. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put this is sort of like the middle area right before the highlight is here and the shadows here. And I like to just lay that in. And I'm not pressing too hard just so I don't wanna fill up too much of the paper so fast. So I'm gonna keep going just a little bit. And as I go in, I'm going lighter and lighter with the way that I am pushing this down so that when I blend the colors together, it will be an easier, most more seamless blend. And now I'm switching to this, which is definitely more yellow. And again, you can see the, the paper, you can almost hear it. I don't know if you can hear it on your end, but um, you can hear it. Wait, I'll stop talking for a second here, listen. You guys hear that? This is just the scratching of the pastel. 
on the sanded paper. And I can, what I, I like to do is I like to just let the pastel go. If a little bit gets into the background, I can always clean that up later. I'm not too concerned about being exact in, in this part of it. Later on, I will go in and correct everything. But so we have a really, really strong highlight right in the center. And I want it to be even more vibrant than what is here. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with this. So the previous color, I'm going to show you guys them side by side. And you can see there's a little bit of a difference. And I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. So as you know, we're, the orange has a really bumpy texture, right? It's not, a, it's not like an apple or um, one of the smoother textures. What I'm going to do at first is I'm just gonna create sort of a sphere. So I'm gonna make this appear really smooth just to get the shape, the depth and dimension of this. And then when I feel like it's round and I could pick it up and pull it out, then I'm gonna go ahead and um, add in all of the detail to make it more realistic. All right, so on the darker end on this side, I'm now going in with this. And then I have this one. And this is a Great American Artworks pastel and I love the name, it's called Dragon's Blood. And it's one of my most used pastels. I absolutely love this color. Look how dark that is, it's so beautiful. It's like this really dark shade of, um, and it's so creamy and soft. I love this particular one. So at first I'm not, I'm just doing these circular motions right now. And I'm not worried about it being smooth because I'm gonna, I'm gonna smooth this all out with my hands. So first I'm just put, laying down all of the color, getting the paper saturated with color so that I can go back in and blend this. Is there a reason you use the circular motion instead of just like a straight back and forth or something? Yes, that's a great question. The reason I don't do this versus this so when I'm blending, you see how when you make these circular motions, you're kind of picking up some of the orange and you're making a, a little bit of a blend right there, right? So it's like up and down and around and around and around. If I do this, I create a separated stroke. So then when I try to blend it, I'm almost like trying to force something to combine, whereas this sort of naturally combines. So yes, there is a reason. So over here, when I don't have the, when I'm not mixing the two colors, a lot of times you'll see more of the straight strokes like this. But when I start to uh, have color overlapping, that's when I like to really do the uh, circular strokes. So I know this area is gonna have a different color. So I'm doing the circular strokes here because I know I'm gonna be putting something else down. Okay, and now I'm gonna go in with my really dark, dark, and it's a dark brown. And I'm just gonna get there all the way up to the end. And here again, this is a circle so that I can sort of already start mixing in a little bit and blending a little bit just with the pastel itself without my hands. Okay, so this is sort of where we've got the, we have color down on the paper now. I have a really strong highlight and I am gonna use white, but not yet. First, I just wanna blend all these colors in. And then once I blend it, then I'll go back in and you're gonna start seeing some of the detail getting picked up and put it in put in there. So first, I'm going to start on the dark side. And I'm going to just take my hand and I'm going to be blending. Now, 
again, when you're blending, if you um, try this technique, when you're blending, just be really mindful about keeping things really clean. So I'm taking a paper towel and I'm wiping my finger every once in a while to make sure that whatever color that I have on this glove doesn't end up like, for example, in there. Because what happens is when you start doing that, you end up mixing all sorts of different colors and you get grays and browns. And then the beautiful pastel colors start to get muted. So I'm just keeping everything really clean if, while I'm blending with my hands. And I just, I love the way pastel blends. You can get these beautiful smooth transitions in the colors um, that just are so seamless. And I'm gonna go all the way up to here. And what I will do is I'm gonna put in the color or in and around the butterfly, but I am gonna go back in and sort of touch everything up at the end to um, get some of the details do get lost when you're blending a little bit. So I'll go back in at the end and get any details that get blended out right now. And that's when I go, so what I do first is I just get the basic shape, which you're watching right now. And then after I'm um, done getting this, then I'll go back in with pastel pencils to capture all the fun little details. Okay, we had but a I question. switched. Oh yes, go ahead. We had a question of, is the work surface flat? Sorry, can you repeat that? Is the work surface flat? I'm working, I, I, do you mean am I working vertical or horizontal? I, I don't know, that was the question that was just passed to me. Okay, if the question meant like, if I'm working vertical or flat on a surface, I'm I'm working vertical right now. Yeah, Clarice, you wanna jump in with the, uh, better explain your question? Um, I've done some pastel work where you work with an easel and then sometimes I've worked on a table service flat. Uh -huh. So I can't really tell from the video how you're approaching this piece. Okay, yes, I am vertical right now. I'm not on a flat surface. One of the reasons I like to work um, vertically always with pastel is that I have a really heavy hand. And so pastel would, it, it, it falls as I'm working vertically. If I'm laying flat, it builds up and gathers and it just leaves like all this dust of pastel on my, uh, surface, which is why I um, like to work vertically. Thank you. I couldn't see if it was on an easel or not. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no problem. And again, I don't know if you're noticing, but I'm switching fingers every time I go to a new location. So right now I'm using a completely different finger so that I don't get any of the previous colors from this side into this side, which I know I want to keep extremely bright. I'm just going around the edge. This edge, I'm gonna, when I do work with my pastel pencils, I'm not gonna make it so even, just because when you look at an actual orange, I mean, it has so much texture, right? So I wanna make sure that um, I'm not having too smooth of an edge on when I get to that part. And I'm just building this side and this side so that I can eventually get into this middle section. I always do that. I always work one side first, next side, and then we get into the transition.
And it's a lot of back and forth when you're blending. It's not like, it's not super speedy. It's just back and forth and back and forth and a kind of like a push and pull on the colors going from light to dark to make sure that that sphere happens and the transitions happen nicely. So still getting that middle section. And now I'm also doing some round circular motions with the, my hand, the same way I did when I was using the pastels, because I wanted to move some of the dark a little bit over into this section. So by doing that, now I'm bringing the dark that way a little bit. And I'm not gonna go super, super smooth on this one, just because I know I'm gonna be adding so much texture because of, the texture of the orange. So I'll get it just to a point where it's feeling a little bit round. And then after that, I will stop. So if it were an apple, I would keep going and keep going until this got really, really, really smooth. But because we have a te natural texture anyway, I'm not gonna go crazy with the transitions here. Just good enough so that it feels round. And some of it is so subtle, but it makes such a difference. So you have to just keep with it. Now, when you and I were talking before, you were explaining to me the type of sandpaper or type of uh, pastel paper you use. Could you explain that a little bit? Yeah, you mean the one that I'm working on right now? Well, in general, you said you like to use the very, you know, more like sandpaper paper. Yes, that's exactly what this is. This is UR 400 grade. And um, this paper is amazing. So I have tried, there's definitely like so many manufacturers of sanded pastel papers, the ones that have the texture that feels like sandpaper. Um, I have a few favorites. And the reason why I love this one so much is because it really, really holds the pastel, like really holds the pastel. So what I mean by that is if I were to pull this off right now and just tap the back of this painting really, really hard, you wouldn't see tons and tons of pastel coming off. The paper really holds it. In some of the other ones, I have done that and seen a lot more pastel come off than I, than I would prefer. And so that's kind of how I figured out which pastel papers I love the most. And this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, you are also so this one that I'm working on right now came pre-mounted. So it is mounted on a foam core. So it is solid. Like it's not a floppy sheet of paper. Um, they sell it in rolls where it is just floppy paper. And when it when I do that, I just get it mounted so that it, it is not, um, so that it has like a nice rigid uh, surface. But um, UART does make a couple of sizes that are pre-mounted. You can buy them. and. This one was a pre-mounted one. I think it's 12 by, I believe it's 12 by 16. And I just chopped off this, chopped it off to make it 12 by 12. And I know they make nine by 12 as well. But yeah, these papers are great. They, they just, if I were to try to do my technique um, on, a more traditional pastel paper that you would maybe see at a art store that's smooth, um, it would not appear the same at all. It, it really wouldn't. It would be a completely different 
I'd have to do a completely different technique on those only because you can't blend and layer as much. Eventually the paper sort of gives up on you and you just, you end up at a point where you're like, I, I can't add any more pastel. These papers can accept almost 10 layers of pastel. So um, I can just keep going and going. And it's also great because if you wanna change something, it's very forgiving in that way. You can easily change. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I wanna go in and put in this white highlight and I'm using just a plain white and I'm gonna put it right where my light source was hitting and that's right here. And I'm gonna just Blend that down. And I'm gonna do it again, just to really emphasize. And I love, I absolutely love working with the single light source and having like super high contrast. And so when I plan these, I actually do set it up like, Right now I'm just working with this and it doesn't have the light that I would necessarily want. So usually what I do is I'll have the lighting in here match, in my studio match what I want on the actual still life, but it would be kind of dark to show on Zoom that way. So I have my studio lights on so that you guys can see better, but um, I love having that super, super bright uh, pop of light against the dark background. And so I do exaggerate a little bit from what is actually there. So even, even though I do have a strong spotlight, it's usually not this intense. I like to just play around with that a bit. And I'm just, I'm almost done with this light source and then I can start putting some of this texture in. Let me just quickly go one more time, really, really get that light in. And then I'm gonna move it up into here because a lot of the, the side of the orange also has light on it. Okay. So now I'm putting my past, like soft pastels sticks away and I'm gonna get pastel pencils. I, I'm using Faber Castell Pit pastel pencils and also Conte pastel pencils. So those are the two brands. I really love those two brands a lot. Um, they have a really great texture to them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in. First thing is underneath this butterfly, there is a beautiful shadow that makes it feel like it's sitting right on top. And so I'm gonna go in and this is a black pastel pencil. And I'm gonna go in and start putting in the shadow on here. And I'm not gonna blend this because I want some of that texture to show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start putting in and I'm going in little circles. And the reason I'm doing the little circles is because I want that texture to show up. And that's the natural texture anyways on the orange. And so I wanna make sure that this part is not gonna get blended. I'm gonna eventually do the entire piece with little, little circles over the whole entire thing with pastel pencils on top. Okay, Fran, you want to jump in with your question? Just unmute yourself. I was just wondering if you're working from the top down so that the um, pastel doesn't get all over stuff that's lower if you had already, if you worked on the whole thing at once. Yes, that's exactly why I'm working top down. You got it. So. I, what I do is like, this was actually completely upside down previously. And I worked this in this whole thing and the black upside down. So when I started the demo, got it ready for you guys, I turned it back right side up. Um, but that's again, the nature of pastel is that it does, it does tend to fall down. And so um, I just orient the paper in the direction where it won't, it won't happen that way. And then I do work top, 
to bottom, left to right as much as possible. But I always say, because I know that people wonder like as a whole composition, how that works. And I always say I work top to bottom, left to right. And it's bit by bit with the whole composition in mind. So it's not like I'm just working on like this one little section. I'm thinking about the whole entire piece as I'm doing it. And you can see I'm starting to get that, that shadow in here a little bit. And I'm just gonna keep working with that. And one of the cool things about when something is bumpy like this is that the light hits it in such, like you'll see pops of light that I'm gonna put in into this dark section just because it's a bump and it's picked up a little bit of light. So when I get there, it's very fun. But right now I'm just gonna go ahead and add some texture into this whole dark section. Is it possible to zoom in a little bit? Cause it's hard to see from this sure. part, what the texture looks like at this point. Yes, absolutely. Let me get you guys a little bit closer. I know it's off center, just bear with me one second while I go a little bit closer. Is that a little better? Um, yeah, it's better. It's just, uh, I'm just trying to see the textural effect, but maybe you'll see it more as I work into the yeah. middle section. Yeah, I'll try. I'll start going into another section to see if that helps. Because yeah, the dark, the darkest part is definitely like the hardest to see in terms of actually so is the light here. I'll, I'll start putting it in, but this is really subtle. You guys, this isn't like a, it's not as dramatic as what I just did. It's, it's really subtle. And that's the thing with um, hyper-realism when you're working, it's not always these little, little tiny details. Cause right now you're about eight inches away from my paper. So you're very, very close. Um, and if I get you any closer, I will not have room for my hand to go in there. but I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit with the texture here. And I won't do the whole orange because I know it's challenging to see, but um, I'm just gonna do a little bit. It's a balance of just a few colors. And first what I do is I'll go across the entire thing. Do you see like I can, when I'm looking at the uh, camera, I can see it. So like when I'm looking at this texture, that would happen subtly the whole way through. The entire way I would just do this really subtle texture the whole entire way through. I won't do the whole thing right now because I know it's um, maybe not as easy to see because it's very light. Even for me, it's not a dramatic thing. It's very, very light. But after I would do that, then I would go back in and get some of those more dramatic bumps, like especially in the highlight area. But in order to do that, I just want to get a few of these in, a little bit of this texture that I would normally put in. And it also just helps blend the pastel too. So even if you're not seeing 100% of this texture, I mean, really, I, it's so subtle on my end too. This is a very subtle process. I'm just curious because I don't think I've ever seen a pastel pencil before. Does that, is that like a tube that's loaded with it or? So pastels in general, um, they're just pigment and binder. And the soft pastel sticks that you saw me using before, like these, yeah. these have the ratio of pigment is much higher um, yeah. than the ratio of pigment in here. So there's more binder in this to keep it in this shape. Okay. No, I was just looking at it. It looked like uh, from the top of the pencil there, it looked like it was something that maybe you load or something. But... No, it's just, no, it's just okay. like a, 
Uh, yeah, any other pencil? So I would do this. I'm not going to put you guys through this, but I would do this across the entire entire thing. And it would take me a little bit of time to get that texture. But then just to give you an example of what this all ends up coming out to be, when I get to these parts right here, this middle value area is where it really like, um, you would really see some more dramatic things happening. Um, this is where I'd go in and start getting some of these really cool shapes that come into the orange. And then you, I would accentuate those with um, the yellows. And I'd keep doing this over and over again throughout the whole entire orange and get these little pops and things of, um, you know, to make it feel like that bumpy texture throughout the whole thing. So I would just I'm, I do all of these details with pastel pencil, um, not the soft pastel sticks. But this area is the most fun because it has all these more dramatic. And again, you can see why I waited to do this until um, the form had already sort of appeared just because once you do this, if you then realize the form is off, to go back in, you're gonna end up having to blend away all of the detail that you just created. So I wait till the, the end to put in all this really fun. Texture. And that would again, continue the whole way. You can kind of see that a little bit more here. I would just keep going that way and that way and into the highlight. And the only place I would use the soft pastel at this point is like right in this highlight where the white is, I would just start putting, do you see that like the little chunks of white into this area? And then I, I would have to go back in again with my pastel pencils with the white. So first I'm just putting the white so it's kind of standing alone right now, but eventually you go in with a pastel pencil into that area. And you start putting in these little dots and then it starts to get some texture. And that I can, I'll go back to that. I want to make sure I have time to put in um, some of this foreground. And because right now what's happening is what I'm going to first put in black the entire way across. And then when I get the black in, it's going to feel like the entire thing is floating. And I have to put in a shadow coming in through here. So first I'm going to put in the black. And everyone always asks what black I use. And I, I use a uh, Rembrandt black. It is one of my absolute favorite flats to use. I'm gonna quickly back you guys up again because um, I wanna make sure you can, oops, sorry. I wanna make sure that you can see the entire bottom part of it. There we go. When I do the, how, when I do this section. How big of a selection of pastels do you have? Oh my gosh, so many. But it's funny, so I have so many pastels, but I work when I when I paint, I usually like I'll look at the I'll look at the object or what I'm working on. I'll pick maybe like if I'm working on still life, like 10 to 15 at most pastels, and then I just put everything away. So it's not um it, I, I always find that working with a more limited palette helps me because I it takes away all of the like second guessing and confusion about the colors. And so I, I like to put it all away. So I don't work with as many colors per piece. 
but I have tons. Okay, again, remember, just bear with me. It's going to be floating for a little bit, but I promise we'll get to it. So this is, again, this is just Rembrandt Black. And I am just putting it Oh, when I switched gloves, this is my background glove. So it looks very different than the other glove that I was just wearing. The, the black that you're applying now and the black in the top of the, the picture there that you already had, <coughs> excuse me, already had on there, <coughs> appear to be different. It's the lighting. Ah, okay. It's the way my light is hitting it right now. It's the exact same black and in person it looks that way, but I know what you're seeing on the screen because I see it too. It's the lighting. If I change the lighting, it'll look the same. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my fingers again to sort of Yeah, the black looks so much when it's when I don't have this bright, I have a really bright light shining on this entire thing. So it's a very unnatural lighting in that way. But when I um, turn it off, it looks so dark, like the black looks so, so black. And I'm just going a little bit carefully around the edge and bottom of this. And then I'll have to readjust some of the shape too as I go when I'm doing this, but. So some of it got a little bit off, but that's very easy to correct. I'm just smoothing out, making sure there's not any paper showing through. Oops. Okay, and so before I continue, before I get in that, um, that beautiful shadow. I'm just gonna quickly darken this one side a little bit because it's gonna be the part that's the darkest. So I wanna make sure that I have that very, very dark. And I know it's, it, you can see the pastel moving. And again, um, that's super easy to correct. So I'd rather get no, gap in between where the fruit is and where the foreground and background come in because it looks so strange when you see like a little halo of paper or like uh, a little bit of something showing through so I'm going all the way and then I'm going to come back in with my pastel to clean that area up And I'll just keep doing that until and then I'll clean that side up in just a bit. Okay, so now we have this um, sort of floating situation going on right here. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some light so that it feels like this is this is sitting on something rather than just hanging out floating. Let me just quickly add some dark right there too. And again, this this area is going to be really textured, so I'm not smoothing it out too much because I want some texture in this part. Okay, so this is the color I'm going to be using to put in some of the. Oh, light. And again, the light source starts, it's coming from this direction, which means the shadow is going to be over there. So I'm going to come in with this pastel. And I'm going to get some. It's going to be a shadow right here coming out and then trailing off. I'm going to keep working with that, but you can start to see, and I'm going to get some light on this side too, just so it's not falling off. And I am going to just brighten up this spot right here because again, the light's coming from this direction. So I want to make sure that we have the most light right about here, I'd say. And then it trails off. And I also want to add just a touch of light because this section is so dark over here. I want to add a little bit of light over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put the pastel down right here because if I do that, it'll just come up a little bit um, too heavy handed. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take my, oh, here we go, pastel. And I'm going to put a little bit on my finger. And then I'm gonna go in he right around here. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I get a little bit of light coming in from here as well. And I'm going to keep working on it, but you can see how like breaking up that one really dark shape there, um, it's starting to give this feeling like it's sitting on something a little bit more. So 
And I just keep playing around with that until I feel like when I back up, it's at a good place. I want to see if I can get the lighting in the studio a little bit um, better so you guys can see this more accurately. Give me one second to see if I can. Might, I might make it worse. Let me see. Hold on. Make it worse? Yeah, I think I did. <laughs> yeah, that didn't do anything. Okay. Let me go back to the original. That's fine. It's so dark. Um, gosh, I wish I could get that light up. I wish I could do a little thing so you could see <laughs> what it looks like, but it's a lot darker in person than what it's showing on the screen. Let me see. Can you tilt it more upright? Sorry, what was that? Could you tilt, if you tilted it more upright, it would save some of that light. If I tilt my camera more upright? Not your camera, your camera. My light. Yeah, your, your, your paper. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> more towards you. Okay, I'm gonna keep working on that. But in the okay. meantime, I. Yeah, Let okay. me just, we're almost at, well, nine o'clock my time, but eight yours. I'm going to go ahead and get a black pencil pencil and just, where is my black? Okay. So see these edges that are just like a little bit off here. What I'd like to do is go in with the pastel pencil. And I'm not gonna make it again, like super, I'm gonna make it kind of bumpy-ish. So it won't be exactly, do you see how I'm able to get some like of that texture there that way? And I'll do the same thing up here. And that's also how I clean up all the edges too. When I have a plain sir, plain background and it's not super detailed. Okay, so that's basically the format of how this works. And then I would, at this point, I would stop and I would go in and get so much more of what you see going on here and more of what you see going around here throughout this entire, like the entire orange is gonna have that. And I'm gonna also darken this area the same way that I was darkening before with the, the circular motions with the black pastel pencil. And I'll just slowly phase that. And then what I'll do is I'll take, I'll switch from the black to a dark brown and then from dark brown to more of like, um, like a burnt sienna type of color. And I'll work my way slowly until I get to the light. So those are the, the colors that I would use when I'm um, putting in the texture going from dark to light. And then in some of these areas, like you saw over here, I do use these little uh, lighter colors to make it you know, pop a little bit more. And especially in this middle section, that's where you're gonna see a lot of those really cool pops of like, um, where you can see the texture and the bumpiness of this fruit. So that's, this area is the most fun to do because it has all the really fun details and texture and everything. But that's basically it. Does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask?
Yeah, so um, when you finish this, can you send us a picture of it? Yes, I can. Absolutely. I'm sure we'd all like to see the finished uh, finished work. Yes, and it's because it, it looks like finished ish, but this is really halfway. So right oh. now, I would say I'm halfway finished with this painting. I have a question. Um, when you're finished with the whole painting, uh, do you just uh, do, do you apply some sort of a fixative to it, or do you just mat it under glass like a watercolor? No. So I yeah okay. So I don't use fixatives. I will just um, I don't use matte board either. What I do use is um, the oh and I think I have one right here. I can show you the Econo space spacers which look like this, and you can get them in different depths. This one is a one eighth inch and it has an adhesive back. So you can just peel off um, and it's adhesive on this side and you stick it to your glass. And that way it gives a little space between your artwork and the glass. So the artwork is not touching the glass and it, you don't see the spacers because they end up in like the, the rabbit of the frame. So you don't end up seeing the spacers, which is great. And um, you don't have to use map, map board that way if you don't want to. Okay. I was gonna ask if you used a, a, a sharpener or pencil for the pencils, but by looking at them, I can tell you, you probably use a razor blade, don't you? I do, I, use, <laughs> I just use this standard blade. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm too scared to use that. <laughs> you know what it is my sharpeners with pastels they just tend to uh, they work initially and then whatever's in the pastel ends up clogging or dulling the blade so quickly yeah right. you know so then it's like I, I just gave up on those and just use blades yeah do you would repurpose your pastel dust and make blended pastel sticks of your own I do, I do do that. So I catch all the dust that falls like on the bottom. And um, it, so there's some artists that will go so far as to separate the pastel dust colors. I don't do that. I just, whatever falls, falls and you end up with shades of grays and browns. <laughs> and so um, I just take the old pastel dust and I also crush up like the itty bitty teeny pieces that are not so usable for me. And then I repurpose them into uh, new pastels just by adding water. You just can't use chlorinated water. That's all. Thank you. And what colors did you use for the butterfly? Okay, I'm gonna show you. So let me get my butterfly colors. And here they are. Okay, I'm gonna start with darkest was black. So we had black. Then in some of this part, I had these two colors. I don't know if you can, here we go. So it was these three for a lot of that dark section. And then I did um, these two, which are the same colors I'm gonna be using in here in the orange up in this section. For the really bright, like the parts that are here, I used soft pastel sticks to get that really nice pop of color. And I always have, I always have a white pastel pencil and a black pastel pencil. And I use those in almost everything that I do. And most of these, with the exception of a few, were all favorite pastel pit pastel pencils. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have a, a favorite brand of pastels or do you just mix them all up? I mix them all up. I would I would say I can name a few. I'm, it's going to be a lot, but I love Terry Ludwig's yeah. Unison, Great American Artworks. I, but all of them, I love all of them. They're beautiful. I, I don't think I've come across a pastel, a professional pastel brand that I didn't like. Have you ever used a pastel matte paper? Mm -hmm, I have. But it doesn't take tech? as. I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. It probably doesn't take as many layers as your you art, right? Or does it? It does not. It does not take as many layers. So I, while I think it's a beautiful paper, 
I don't really use it that frequently because I can't layer as much as I'd like to layer on it. Um, it just, and the other thing is that it, let me see if I can back this up with the lighting, figure out what, why it's not showing the darkness of this, but so, um, yeah. it, it's, it's so different. It's, this is still not as dark as it really is, but, uh, that's okay. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. So pastel matte, it's, I feel like it does so well with pastel pencils and maybe a lighter hand than what I have, but because mm -hmm. I, I, I layer so much and I work so have heavy on these papers, um, you are, is definitely a preferred one. And so is art spectrum color fix. Okay. So art spectrum color fix is also a favorite of mine because it really holds the pastel. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Any other questions? I have one comment. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, we had a a uh, uh, in a, in 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 our gallery had a show of World War II veterans, uh, the art that they did when when they were at the war. In, in both cases, in the Pacific, and one man was a a pastel artist. And what he used for paper was what we call emery paper, because the ship would have tons of that. It's used for metal finishing. Have you ever seen emery paper? I haven't. That's so interesting. What is the texture of the emery paper? I'm assuming like an emery board. I don't know. Well, no, no. It's it's very fine. It's for it's for polishing steel. It's it's just before you would go to uh, put in an abrasive and come in with power buffers. But it's uh, probably about a 300. Uh, I have a I have a 300 paper that I use for working on wood, and very rarely, and it's that kind of fine. But the to see a a a painting of a ship uh, in the water done with pastels on emery paper is is quite an experience because you oh, know yeah. that's that's the materials he had at hand so cool what an interesting story it is that's interesting it's very interesting it's really cool because so i teach workshops and almost always there's a handful of international students and it's so interesting to hear they do not have access to the same materials that we have in the United States. And um, a lot of times, some of the students that I have are able to get shipments of it, but it takes like 30 to 40 days for these supplies to come in. And some just can't even get them, get them at all. And so, um, you know, we have to work around and to, to figure out different materials that you can use to achieve similar results, you know, but we have, we have such a great, variety of pastel papers to choose from here. But but the materials you're using are part of the poetry, aren't they? Yes. Yes, they are. Because if I were to recreate this on a smooth paper, like a more traditional paper, it would be a completely different technique and a different, it would ultimately look different in the end as well. Hmm. Would you um, uh, I have a restate the, the type of paper just sort of for a final, this is the type of paper I've been using and what have you? Yeah, so this paper is UART 400 grade, and that's just U and then ART 400 grade. And the other one that I recommend that I love is Art Spectrum Color Fix. And Color Fix is spelled C O L O U R. They are an Australian uh, brand and they're amazing. Also, they, both of these just really hold the pastel. So you can have fun and be heavy handed with these and, you know, use those super soft, creamy, the Terry Ludwigs and the Unisons and, you know, the Great American Artworks. And if I wanted to right now, I could put something over this entire section because this paper can hold another layer. Like I've actually done this where I've done an orange and decided mm, it needs something. And I'll add like a whole leaf or even a butterfly right on top of something that wasn't planned because it can hold that many layers of pastel. Don't you have a question? Yes. Have you ever worked on colored paper? 
Which, which paper? Colored. Already colored <laughs> canvas. Paper, colored paper. The, yes, I have. And oh, that's another question I get. Why don't I start on black if I end up, most of my pieces have a very similar feel to them and with, where the background is very, very dark. And the reason why is this right here. So when I have worked on black, ultimately for, for me, I do let some of the paper show through in this highlight section. So you saw the paper saturate or the color saturating the paper, but little hints of paper are still showing through. In the, with the black paper, it, it, it's like this darkness that I don't love. And so that's why it's for that, that pop of light. I see. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Anyone, anyone else have any questions? No, oh, okay. just praise. <laughs> praise for the talent. Well, well I, I cannot encourage you guys enough to go out and look at her website and look at some of the work she does. She does some, she's got some portraits out there that are absolutely fantastic. Uh, oh, as well as uh, the fruit and uh, what else you got out there. Uh, now I don't remember everything, but it's it's all excellent work, and I really encourage you to go out and check out our website. Thank you. So, and uh, okay, Sanita, if you want to go ahead and sort of uh, do a little promotion, self promotion, what do you got coming up? <laughs> okay, so I have a workshop. April 22nd. That's my next one. I just had one last weekend. Um, it, last weekend's was a portrait. Then co one coming up is flowers. So if you're interested in painting flowers, um, that's April 22nd. They're vir all virtual and it is from 10 to 3.30 on a Saturday. So that's my next one coming up. The next one after that is going to be in June and we'll be doing still life in June. So probably um, fruits. Okay, and your website and and uh, Instagram sites are? Okay, so website is www.sangeetafedicate.com and Instagram is sangeetafedicate fine art. Would you say that again more slowly? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'll spell it for you. My first name is spelled S-A-N-G-I-T-A. -A. Yeah. And my last name is spelled P-H-A-D-K-E. So my Instagram is Sangeeta Fudke Fine Art. And I do post a ton of videos on there, almost at least one, one a week. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, and if you look at the interview we did, uh, you will find those also at the bottom of the screen, as I do with all artists. Uh, you. So you can look there to contact her also. Yeah, that was a great interview. <laughs> that was oh, cute. Yeah. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a little bit of uh, experience with that, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> we had some communication issues and ended up uh, doing it differently from what I normally do, but it still came out pretty good. So. Okay, uh, and that. Uh, there's no other questions for her. I'm going to stop the recording. Maybe. <laughs>